change the material domain to mast and search for dither. Check the dither opacity mask. Connect the alpha output of the texture to the opacity mask of the material. Save the material and see that now the figure is casting shadows. If you want, it's also possible for our character to receive lights in our level. In that case, we would have to set the material domain as default lit and connect the texture output to the base color slot. But I almost never use this because the geometry of the figure is flat, so the light doesn't behave realistically and it ends up looking fake. So here we have our shot. Let's render it out. I always use a render queue for renders of this type. If you don't see it there like I do, again, it's necessary to turn it on in the plugins. If you have it, click on the flop icon and get into the render settings. There, in the output section, set the output path and resolution. Then click on settings and add anti-aliasing. I already explained how it works. In this case, however, slightly different settings will be required. Check override aliasing. Then set up the anti-aliasing method. If our character's material is in masked mode, I usually use the fast approximate method. I have tested all the methods and this gave me the best results. Temporal anti-aliasing or temporal super resolution looks smoother but it causes ghosting and it makes the actor look very soft. Most people recommend using the non mode but in this case our material is masked. Masked material cannot work with semi-transparency but it uses dithering instead. If we set the anti-aliasing method to none, it would make the edge dithering too sharp and visible. However, I always choose none mode when my material is set to translucent.